Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. August 11th, 2020 marks 10 years of Big Tractor Power sharing videos on YouTube. In that time, I have shared 1,806 farm machine videos. The channel has gained 244,000 tractor fans around the world, and those fans have watched the videos 126 million times. In this video, I wanted to share with you 10 of the big farm machines that inspired the creation of Big Tractor Power. I started taking pictures of tractors when I was in third grade and started posting tractor history on BigTractorPower.com back in 2001, and that led to the creation of Big Tractor Power YouTube in 2010. My long-term goal and hope is to film every tractor from the world's largest tractor, the 1100 horsepower Big Bud 16V747, to the 40 horsepower New Holland Boomer 8N tractor. My interest in big tractors began at an early age. I grew up in western New York near Rochester, and in this region from Syracuse along I-90 to Rochester and on to Buffalo, there are more articulated four-wheel drive tractors in use than any other place in the the world. One of those tractors is the Steiger 480 quad track that you see working here at the beginning of the video. This tractor is prominently featured on Big Tractor Power YouTube's homepage in the introduction video. This 480 quad track is a good example of what Big Tractor Power is all about. Growing up, I always wanted to know more information about these big farm machines and go out in the field and see them close up and climb up in the cab to see how they operated. In my younger days, I was most often a distant observer watching these big machines at work from the roadside. But as I got older, I started taking pictures and introducing myself to the farmers, which led to videoing the machines at work. Over the next 20 minutes, I'd like to share with you 10 of the farm machines that inspired me to start photographing and videoing farm equipment. I'll share a little information and backstory on why I like the machine, and then you'll be able to hear and see it at work in the field. So let's get started on my top 10. The first farm machine that led to the creation of big tractor power actually wasn't a tractor. It was a combine. My lifelong interest in farm machinery began at a very young age when a farmer just down the road from my parents' house invited my dad and I to ride on his combine when he was harvesting oats. This farmer's 88 horsepower 70 bushel Case 1060 combine was the first piece of farm equipment I ever had a chance to ride in. I remember vividly climbing up into the combine's cab and how exciting it was to see the reel on the grain head spin around and the auger collect the oats and watching the oats pile up in the grain bin just beside the combine's cab and watching grasshoppers pile up on top of the oats. It was really neat watching the combines on loading augers swing out over the truck and watching all the oats pour out, including the grasshoppers. After that first combine ride, I developed a lifelong interest in farm machinery and tractors. Unfortunately, I have not been able to film a Case 1060 working out in the field, but I do have the opportunity to share with you a Case 1160 and a Case 1660 combine. The 1060, 1160, and 1660 were all manufactured from 1968 through 1972 and are powered by a Chrysler 318 V8 engine. The 1160, like the 1060, is rated at 88 horsepower. It features a 90 bushel grain bin. The big 1660, which topped the Case Combine line, holds 100 bushels of grain and is rated at 100 horsepower. I have liked tractors almost since the time that I could walk, and that's because there was a field directly across from my parents' house where I got to see a lot of farm equipment at work. It belonged to a local farm that was a dairy operation and raised grain, as well as sweet corn for the local cannery. This farm purchased a brand new Case 2470 Traction King four-wheel drive from our local Case dealer, Monroe Tractor, in 1977, along with a seven-bottom Case 700 series plow. As a young child, I had never seen a tractor as big as this Case 2470 the first time it showed up across the road to start working in the field. Every time this tractor came to the field, I would get out all of my toy tractors and play with them in the front yard and pretend that I was out there plowing just like the big case. 
One day, the farmer pulled up in front of our house and asked me if I wanted to take a ride, and I was so excited to be able to climb up in the cab and see what it was like to be behind the steering wheel of one of these big machines. This was the first tractor that I was ever able to take a ride in, and without a doubt is the reason why I like big four-wheel drive tractors more than any other farm machine. The International 2 Plus 2 series of tractors was new for 1979, and I remember the first time that I saw one of these machines at my local International Harvester dealer. Rochester Tractor, located in Chile, New York, and asking my dad, what kind of tractor is that? He told me it was called an anteater because it had such a long front forward engine and articulated in front of the cab. This tractor certainly does have a long nose similar to the anteater. It's also called a Snoopy over in the United Kingdom. No matter what you call this tractor, it was a very popular selling machine in the early 1980s in western New York. A lot of area dairy farms like this type of tractor for tillage, forge harvesting, and manure spreading, and several grain farms use them for tillage, planting, and row crop cultivating. I thought this was an amazing looking tractor when I was a kid, and I still enjoy seeing these 2 plus 2s at work today. International offered this front forward design from 1979 through 1985. The original 2 plus 2 series included the 130 horsepower model 3388, 150 horsepower 3588, and the big 170 horsepower model 3788. Here we can see a 3388 2 plus 2 on grain cart duty hauling winter wheat away from a Case IH 2188 axle flow combine. There are a lot of dairy farms located in western New York, and as a kid I always enjoyed watching all the forge harvesters at work on these farms. One of my favorite machines to watch was the John Deere 5830 self-propelled forge harvester. I remember how impressive it was to see one of these forge harvesters brand new at my local John Deere dealer, J.P. Halpin and Sons, located in Henrietta, New York. It was always neat seeing this big green and yellow forge harvester mow down the corn and chop it up and hear the whine of the feed going from the spout into the matching green and yellow John Deere 714A and 716A forge boxes. Corn chopping time was always exciting to watch because not only was there the big self-propelled forge harvester at work in the field, but there were a variety of tractors and wagons going back and forth from the field to the farm where you could see more tractors working to unload the forge boxes into the forge blower filling the silo. There are a lot of canning crops raised in western New York, and sweet corn is one of those crops. The Byron sweet corn picker really revolutionized the harvesting of this crop. The Byron 8400 was introduced in 1985. It's powered by a John Deere 466 cubic inch diesel engine rated at 250 horsepower. This six-row sweet corn picker was manufactured in Byron, New York, not far from where I grew up, and I've had a chance to visit the factory several times. Oxbow continues to manufacture their modern-day sweet corn harvesters at the same location. It was always interesting to watch this big harvester picking sweet corn. It's a very unique type of farm machine.
New Holland automatic bail wagons are always interesting to watch, and they make a unique sound running down the road. When I'd hear that low whine from a long ways off, I would run out in the front yard just to catch a glimpse of the machine driving by. New Holland's automatic bail wagon, known as the Stack Cruiser, has been in production for over 60 years. This machine collects 161 14 by 18 small square bales in the field, puts them in a nice neat stack, and it has a unique tying mechanism that puts the 161 bales in a block that then can be deposited in a nice stack inside the barn. These machines are kind of mesmerizing to watch as they systematically work their way across the field collecting the square bales. As a kid, I was always excited to have an opportunity to drive by our local Sperry New Holland dealer, Parnell Sales and Service, located in Pafard, New York, and seeing the stack cruisers brand new lined up in a row alongside the road. A dairy farm near my parents' house was a solid Ford tractor farm. The big tractor on the farm in those days was a 130 horsepower Ford 9000. This was a true blue farm. Every machine on the farm, from the plow to the corn planter to the combine, was Ford. The big bold look of this tractor always stood out to me. The big boxy cab, the dual wheels. It was really neat to watch this machine at work. It did everything on the farm from plowing to disking, forge harvesting, and manure spreading. On a side note, I have to say that I've always been a fan of skid steer loaders. They're a pretty neat machine to watch at work, and where I grew up, it seemed like every dairy farm had a New Holland. Steiger Series 3 articulated four-wheel drives are one of my all-time favorite tractors. A farm just the next road over from the one that I grew up on had three big Steigers when I was a kid, a Bearcat 3 and two Panther 3s. There's just something exciting about seeing these big lime green tractors in the field, especially when they were new. There really wasn't anything else like them on the market. It was exciting to see the farm use these tractors to plow, chisel plow, field cultivate, disc, and cultimulch. Batavia Tractor was our local Steiger dealer, and it was always exciting to see these big new Steigers on their lot. And I would ask my parents to take the long way to town just so I could catch a glimpse of my neighbor's Steiger sitting in the farmyard. The Series 3 four-wheel drives were introduced by the company on the day I was born in 1976, and I've had a lifelong interest in these machines. 
The biggest tractor initially in the Series 3 lineup was the ST325 Panther III. This tractor was manufactured from 1976 through 1982 and is rated at 325 horsepower. The farm just the next road over is still Steiger Strong today. Here you can see their Panther 4 KM360 at work, and they like lime green paint so much that the big tractor on the farm is that specially painted 480 quad track that you saw working at the beginning of this video. My all-time favorite row crop tractor is the 1976 International Black Stripe 1066. The farm that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video with the Case 2470 Traction King also bought one of these 125 horsepower 1066s new in 1976. As a kid, I would watch this tractor working for hours and hours. It was used to plow, disc, cultimulch, mow hay, forge harvest, and spread manure. It was always exciting to see it out in the field with its big boxy cab and that special black stripe decal that ran over the hood and down the side to the cab doors. The tractor has a great sound out in the field and has a standout look. It seemed like almost every dairy farm in the area and some of the big grain farms had a 1066. The tractor was manufactured from 1971 through 1976. The 1976 models are the only ones that feature this special black stripe decal. The rest have a white side panel decal. The 1066 is a solid tractor and the farm that I grew up watching still has their 1066 44 years later. The big tractor that I remember the most growing up was an International 4786. This big machine is powered by an International Harvester DV800 798 cubic inch V8 engine rated at 350 horsepower. A local grain and canning crop farm that had several fields just down the street from my parents' house bought a 4786 in 1979. I remember the great sound that big V8 engine made as the tractor rolled down the road to head to the field and the growl of the engine that you could hear from the tractor working from over a mile away. This big Steiger built tractor was manufactured from 1979 through 1981. The local farm used it on a 10 bottom international plow to plow up corn stalks and winter wheat stubble. It was used on a large international field cultivator to work under kidney bean and pea ground to plant winter wheat in the fall and also on a big Krauss disc to work under sweet corn stalks. That local tractor was the first tractor I ever took a picture of. I was in third grade and I liked the tractor so much that just a few years ago, I purchased a 1981 4786 and that's the tractor you're watching in this video.
Steve enjoyed spending some time out in the field hearing and seeing 10 of my favorite farm machines. It's always hard to pick just 10 machines. I like them all. I like all the brands, and there's such a variety of farm equipment to share. I'm looking forward to filming many more machines and sharing them with you here on the channel. I would like to hear what your all-time favorite tractor, combine, or piece of farm equipment is. Tell me about it in the comments section below this video. And I want to thank all the people who enjoy watching these videos and the farmers that help make them possible. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. As always, thank you for watching.